Hello all, and welcome to our live online launch of the RPB Z-Link Radiant Heat System. I'm Kurt Ivory, the CMO here at RPB Safety, and it's my pleasure to be joining you from our training studio here in Detroit. And we really appreciate you all taking the time to join us today. So over the course of the development of this product, we've had several foundries work with us um, They've taken a big part in this journey in the development of this radiant heat system. And we are excited to share some of their feedback with you today. We were planning on having two members from two different foundries join us live, um, but unfortunately their schedules changed. So we weren't able to uh, have them live today, but we do have recordings of them from a couple of interviews. So we'll share these with you. And at the end of this session, we will be doing a, a live Q&A time. So if you do think of any questions during the presentation, please put them into the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. And we'll do our best to answer all those questions at the end. At this, at this time, I'd just like to say a big thank you to our engineering and operations team here at RPB for their hard work and dedication. It hasn't been without its challenges to release this product during a pandemic. This is our third major product launch this year, and this one is definitely for the heavy industry, and it's an honor to support our industrial heroes. So I'd now like to welcome Edward Larson and the Z-Link Radiant Heat System. Wow, that's an awesome looking product. It is, isn't it? Uh, next mission is Mars, was it? Yeah, you're right there. So uh, over the past several years, we've been studying the way people in high heat environments, particularly in foundries, how they've been working and the conditions that they've been placed under in e each day. And we saw an opportunity to completely change their experience, both from a safety and a comfort perspective. I remember asking a guy in a foundry, it would have been about 10 years ago, why don't those guys in the aluminum suits wear supplied or powered air respirators? And his response was, because nothing will take the heat. Well, today, we have something that will take the heat. And it has been tested in some of the hottest environments. Edward, would you like to talk us through some of the key features of this awesome new product? Thanks, Kurt. And thanks again, everybody, for joining as we discuss the features of this awesome new product. And uh, I guess it's a pretty hot topic too, right? Correct. So when we first released our Z-Link respirator several years ago, we mentioned that it was more than just a product. It was a system. And today we're showing you another addition to this versatile system. So something that makes this product obviously look pretty cool is the gold plated visor. This serves a number of purposes. Firstly, it's reflecting the heat away from the operator. It's also able to provide shade five protection to these individuals. We have two different types of lenses. Firstly, we've got a clear lens that has the gold plating on it. And we also have a shade five lens that has that coating as well. These lenses are also providing protection to the clear lens underneath. And just like the inner lens, it's also Z87 plus approved. So providing that operator with that eye and face protection. Now you can lift that gold visor up by simply lifting up on the large glove size latch there to lift that visor up to then get you that full visibility with the clear lens. At the same time, still giving that operator respiratory protection as well as that full face and eye protection. The aluminum hood is reflecting the intense heat away from the operator. And this has been manufactured to reduce cost of ownership by being in three main parts. Each part can be purchased and replaced separately. So the three parts, firstly, you've got your top cover, 
that's reflecting the heat away from the top part of the Z-link. You have then got the rear cover that is protecting the rear portion of the Z-link. And then you have the aluminum shroud that attaches to the Z-link the same way as the standard shrouds do. We also have the aluminum cover for the breathing tube. Adding to the versatility of the product is the fact that it can be configured in multiple different ways. You could use just the aluminum shroud with a gold plated lens for those cooler environments, or if you needed those high intense environment protection, you can add the rear protection and that top cover to increase that protection in those intense hot environments. For an industry that's incredibly warm, our PAPR system or supplied air system are paired with this head top and can make a real difference in the comfort and safety to these individuals. By allowing air to circulate around the body, this helps to reduce the feeling of the heat being experienced by this user. Reducing their levels of fatigue, which increases their safety and productivity. When paired with a supplied air system, you can even offer the cooling from our C40 climate control device to reduce that heat even further. These environments are riddled with respiratory hazards and by utilizing positive pressure systems, this supports the user with their breathing, making it easier to breathe in these high heat environments while preventing the particulates and contaminants that can so easily make their way into their breathing air system. With the RPB Z-Link Radiant Heat System, operators within high heat environments will be more protected and productive. And Kurt, I think you have some stories to share on a, a recent visit to the foundry that was actually doing a lot of the testing. I wonder if you want to share that now. Yeah, sure. So earlier this week, actually, we had the opportunity to get in a, into a foundry and we, we actually got onto the foundry floor. We were there for probably about three hours and we wore PAPRs ourselves during the hour visit. And one thing that we found very, very interesting was after the visit, we took the filters out of the PAPR and we were very, very surprised to see what is actually in the air. So this here is a clean pre-filter. So this is the pre-filter on top of the main filter. And after just three hours on the floor, that's what one of the pre-filters look like in one of our PAPRs. So you can see there's a lot of contaminant in the air. Now, if we take these pre-filters off, you can see this is what a clean main filter looks like. And again, even with that pre-filter in place and just after three hours, that's what the main filter also looked like. So you can see there's a lot of contaminants in the environment that these operators are working in. They are, are using uh, engineered controls as well to take out as much as possible, but there's obviously times that this is not feasible and there is still a lot of contaminants in the air. So you can see with, with this here, what a PAPR or even a supplied air system can do to protect an operator from what is in the environment. Now, this has just been a high level overview of the product, Edward, just touching on those key features there. So what we'd like to do now is go on to uh, some feedback that we received. This feedback was from one of the safety officers that we've been working with over the last couple of years as we developed this product. So we'll go ahead now, we're gonna play this recording. Uh, so this is Phil Walker, and this is what he had to say with some of the questions we had for him. My name is Philip Walker. I'm the Occupational Health and Safety Supervisor at Irvin Industries AMA Steel Division. Uh, been here about three years, but been in the steel industry for about a decade. So we asked him, what product did you use prior to using the Z-Link Radiant Heat System? So historically, uh, you know, the steel industry has been very progressive as an industry whole for respiratory protection. We obviously try and use the engineering controls, but when those aren't feasible, we have to turn to PPE. And that's where over the last couple decades, uh, respiratory protection has been the focal point in the steel industry. So 
you know, we've we've tried everything from you know dust mask to uh, full face cartridge respirators to other papper style units, but none of them could incorporate everything into one. And you know, when I have guys that it takes them three minutes to don all their PPE, that's three minutes lost. That's three minutes that they're you know not happy with you know how much they have to put on and everything they do feasibility wise this is what we have to do and you know with this product it's bloop slide it on and they're done it it's so much easier the guys they're allowed to get to break faster get to lunch faster and then with the whole cover-up their cleanup time their wash-up time it's decreased so they're going home quicker then we asked, describe how the situation has changed now that you use the Z-Link and what did your team notice? So when I was talking with some of my guys that were using uh, the uh, Radiant Heat Z-Link, the first thing they said is, something's different. And I said, what do you mean something's different? Like, bad, good, what's different? They're like, I was trying to figure it out and they're like, it's quieter, first of all, but second of all, I don't have sweat dripping in my eyes. They said, you know, even with the brow pads on safety glasses and stuff, you still get the sweat that drips in your eyes. And with how the airflow is in the Z-Link and they can adjust it to what they, you know, feel comfortable with, they don't, they don't get that. And, you know, the first thing they said is, I just feel better. And they said, there's really, I just feel better. There's no super way to describe it. There's no technical way to describe it. They said, I just feel better. And I said, okay, good. What's bad about it? And they said, um, I haven't found anything yet. And they said, it's different. So the first half hour, it's like, what do I got on? You know, what's this? How does this work? And they said, but weight wise, it's, it's lightweight. And I'm looking at it ergonomically and a lot of other uh, helmet style pappers, you know, you have the motor and the filters and the blower and everything, batteries right on your head and neck. And ergonomically, you're setting yourself up for, for problems. You know, because it's a waste mounted uh, filter and blower, uh, it just goes up to the helmet. It's, it's an ergonomic uh, achievement. And like I said, the guys just say they feel better. So we asked him, how does the gold-coated lens hold up in this environment? So during product development, uh, one of the big challenges that we came across was the reflective lens. And, you know, one of the big things that caused other reflective lenses to wear out or, or the life expectancy to decrease was where a guy would grab the lens and flip it up with the gloved hand, you know, you'd flip it up and it would wear the, the, gold, the gold coating off. And what RPB did with the design when I came to him and I said, hey, you know, we need to figure out a way to, you know, allow that visor to flip up, but yet not rub the, the reflective coating off. And lo and behold, boom, they pulled through and there's a little flap out that you know fits perfect for the thumb just to grab onto and flip up um, very similar to like a welding helmet visor you know it flares out at the bottom and this does just that um, you know we we tried some different shades of lenses and stuff and we came up with with a great one so we asked has the z-link radiant heat system held up in the rugged environments so when i got the first prototype in RPB says, all right, Phil, give it a try. See what it does. I said, you really want me to do that? And I said, yeah. Okay, here we go. And I got one of my guys and I said, hey, I need you to try this. And he looks at me and goes, what am I doing? I said, put it through the trials. And he looks at me and he goes, through the trials? I said, put it through the trials. Tell me every day what you think. And Every day he'd stop by and say, okay, put it through the ringer today. All right, what's it look like? Uh, thought you said you put it through the ringer. I did, he said. 
held up great. So we're well over 200 hours on a prototype and it looks brand new. I can't, I can't speak enough of the quality that this respirator has. I mean, it's the, the lenses, the, you know, the, the biggest thing is if you change out the pre-filter, like you need to, we get 40 hours out of a, out of a, uh, you know, the HEPA filter, the main filter. Change out the pre-filter every day, you're good to go. You know, my guys have used it during repair, they've used it during production. It holds up. There's no questions asked. The Z-Link with the PX5 blower pack holds up. A steel foundry environment is rough. It's dirty, it's grimy, it's dusty, it's hot. We accomplished all of it. There's no questions. This product will beyond withstand the environment that we put it through. And you know, about after 120 hours or so of, of uh, it being used, he brought it to me and he goes, uh, I like this. And I said, what do you mean you like it? He says, I feel better. I said, you feel better? He says, yeah, I feel better. I, it doesn't take me as long to wash up doesn't take me as long to put it on or take it off he goes and I've been rough on it on purpose and it's held up I said okay I said what else do you mean you feel better he goes at home I'm not as tired at the end of my shifts I sleep better I feel better he goes I just feel better and for a safety professional that's worth gold right there is when an employee just says I feel better. Okay, no questions asked. It's a go. Looking at the Z-Link as a whole, would you say it's a versatile system? With the Z-Link, I can put it on a guy who's qualified for four or five different jobs. And if you know his supervisor has to shut him down and say, hey, I need you to stop production. Uh, I need you to go over here. I need you to weld this up. And then he gets that welded and supervisor says, okay, great. Now I need you to jump over here because we're shorthanded and I need you to help repair this. With the Z-Link, I don't have to worry about it. You know, he pops the gold visor off that he's using in production for the, for the reflective heat. And he pops the welding helmet on. Meanwhile, I'm never losing respiratory protection, I'm never losing eye protection, I'm never losing face protection. He's he's protected. Pops the new visor on, welds up what he needs to fix up, you know, as a as a maintenance guy, and then he's going to do the repair because we're we're off production and now we're doing a repair shift. And he okay, takes off the welding visor and goes at repair. All while he's protected. In I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry. Is he wearing it right? Is is he, you know, does he have the foam gasket off his safety glasses because he's fogging up and he just can't see? You know, sometimes we try to protect him but we create another hazard and that's you got to you got to play the balance game there. And here I don't have to. I don't have to worry does you know, does he have to switch hard hats to put the welding visor on and still have head protection and you know, a, a grinding shield and it's there. It's there. I don't have to worry about it. It's one stop. Assign it to him. He puts it on when he comes out of the locker room. He takes it off when he goes in. The rest of the time, it's on. He's protected. So we asked him if others in the industry were considering switching to a PAPR system, what advice would you give them? So, professional to professional, we all know the struggles and the trials we go through with respiratory protection to be compliant. The biggest one is a good fit, a true good fit that's compliant with the standards and compliant with other manufacturers' recommendations of you have to be clean shaved. You can't have any seal interference. And then, you know, mixing all the other elements into it. With a PAPR, you don't have to worry about that. You still have your, your certification, 
you know, from from the medical providers that say yes, they're physically okay to wear a, a papper, but I don't have fit tests to worry about. I don't have the policing part of, you know, do they have a proper seal? Did they do their seal checks? I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about, you know, are their safety glasses tight fitting? Are their safety glasses appropriately fitting? I don't have to worry about, you know, is their holder for their shields on in 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 place? I don't have to worry about any of that. It's taken care of with the Z-Link. They slide it on and they go. What was it like working with RPB during the development process? So having over a decade in the steel industry, I recognize that we can make improvements with our PPE. We can make improvements with respiratory protection when those other controls aren't feasible or they're not doing everything and we still need to protect. And I had talked with other companies and, and I kind of got the, yeah, well, we got this product. Well, that's not exactly going to work. And when I met RPB, I talked to their team and worked with the engineers and we came up with the high heat uh, or radiant heat Z-Link uh, and now we've got a perfect product you know it's it's doing everything and RPB listens they understand they they find a way to understand what it is that you need and why you need it and then it's not just sales team their sales team is great but the sales is sales you know at the end of the day it's their engineers that are right there side by side with you at three in the morning you know doing product testing at three in the morning doing you know an assessment to figure out what we need to do and how do we achieve that and i rpb is great you know, no, no questions asked. You know, if I say, hey, you know, we need to look at something like this or we need to put a tweak here. Okay, it's done. And they're, they're right there. Would you recommend RPB products to others in the industry? Professional to professional in the safety world. You know, we, we, we grab grab info from other people, you know, from others in the industry. We benchmark off each other. We we steal ideas, steal PowerPoint slides, everything for each other. You know, take a picture of that. I'm using that in my training program. If you're looking for a solution, you know, even if it's not the high heat, you know, maybe you're in the in the petrochemical or or uh, you know another you know the paper mills or, or any any safety industry really do your research on on what you need and then do your research on what type of service you're going to get and I, I can't speak highly enough of this product it's the solution for so many problems and challenges that the safety guy you know faces every day and this just takes care of it now we couldn't leave with us without asking our favorite question what are some of your life's best moments so in life there's nothing more important than my wife and kids and you know we're we're all at work for a reason you know, let's be frank we're here for a purpose and the purpose is is what we have at home what we go to at home and ensuring that we get there is the challenge it's not, uh, you know, hey, we, we had record-breaking sales this month. Hey, we, you know, met budget. No, it's, I'm having dinner with my family tonight. So, yeah, that was some feedback we received um, from a, a safety officer who's been doing extensive trials on the product. So we trust you found that insightful. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here today, hence we did the, did the recording. 
Um, we did get another video, just a short video of an actual operator. So uh, this guy who we're going to show now, he has been using the product for several months and we actually got some feedback directly from him and we'll share that now. It's just a short clip of, of a few questions that we asked him. My name is Christopher Porter. I work at Urban Industries, Amistil Division in Adrian, Michigan. Um, I work on the casting deck as the bee helper. Can you describe the difference between the Z-Link and the cartridge mask you were previously using? Prior to using the Z-Link, I was using the tight-fitting uh, respirator cartridge mask, and I noticed that using the Z-Link, I noticed that my sleep habits are a lot better, my quality of breathing is a lot better, um, I don't get as tired throughout the shift, almost like a sleep apnea type issue because I'm not breathing in the, the particles. Even with the cartridge masks, I was I was still breathing in the cartridge, the, the uh, I was still breathing in the gluten's. Um, with this, I'm I'm a lot cleaner leaving the shop. I don't have stuff coming in my eyes. I'm not pulling stuff out of my eyes or blowing my nose and getting black soot. So it, it's it's considerably changed my lifestyle. How has the Z-Link helped increase your safety? Z-Link has definitely improved our air quality and also our hearing quality here at Urban Industries. Do you feel you're more productive in the Z-Link? Ever since wearing the Z-Link, my fatigue has been reduced and allows me to be a better quality employee because of the less fatigue by wearing the Z-Link over the cartridge mask. Do you feel safer in the Z-Link radiant heat system? After doing a comparison on the safety aspect of it, being on, being on the safety committee, we have found out that wearing the Z-Link with the cape actually helps reduce the sparks that go down our necks and actually helps reduce our burns in our industry. I feel 10 times safer wearing the Z-Link over the cartridge mask. What would you say to others in the industry considering that considering this? I encourage every industry to switch over to the Z-Link for increased health and safety. We asked them, can you tell us about RPB? RPB, I feel it's a, a company that's based off of family. Um, I can tell you that my stepkids, they promote this business. They've got a keychain on their backpack and they'll tell you that their step that's what keeps their stepdad safe every day. It, it's it's not this company is definitely based off of family and it really does show, especially by their quality and how they're made in the United States. That really really was a driving force for us to take on this product. Can we ask if you had any other comments? I ended up learning that the sound radiation that coming off of our electric arc furnace, I was actually reducing the decibels wearing the Z-Link than I was wearing the exact same rated decibel hearing protection with the cartridge mask in a hard hat style system. Um, that has helped my hearing quality improve. Um, it's also helped with my sleep, with the air quality that I'm getting, and also the particles that I'm taking out of my eyes. And as the a leader of eye injuries due to burnt particles, um, it's, it's super helped reduce our eye injuries here at Urban. So there's some uh, real feedback from, from a user who's used this product extensively for, for several months. So trust that was helpful uh, for you to get that. Uh, one of the, I don't know what you thought of, but one of the comments I, I found very interesting um, we're speaking with this gentleman and, and he's not the only one to tell me this mm -hmm. was the uh, sleep situation so i've actually had uh, several end users say this to me and it was, it was great to obviously hear it recorded there that they sleep better when they're using a papr respirator and, and like i said we've heard this several times and what we've found is from what we can see is when they're using a cartridge mask, they aren't getting the perfect seal. And we know many things that can hinder that. Obviously, you're not completely clean shaven or you've had a little bit of stubble if they've had uh, weight loss and they haven't been fit tested again. And so 
particles can get in around a cartridge mask still, so they've, they've got that issue. Also, they get what they call um, respirator or, or user fatigue. So that's when you know the operator obviously wearing a cartridge mask has to draw their air through the cartridges with their own lungs. So they're kind of using their own lungs as the pump versus the PAPR, which is blowing the air to them. They can breathe a lot easier. So they're obviously um, not as exhausted and they actually get a better night's sleep as a result of that. So some very, very interesting points that I took out of that. So now we're gonna move on to our Q and A session. So we would um, encourage you to go ahead, ask any questions you like. If you want us to take any pieces off the product, we'd be more than happy to do that right now. So go ahead and put your questions into the Q and A at the bottom, and we'll do our best to answer these right now. Okay, looks like I've got a few few coming in here. Um, first one here is, can the gold visor be easily removed? It mentioned um, switching to a weld lens. How can the visor be easily removed? Edward, do you want to take that one and actually show our audience here how you can actually remove the remove the gold visor? Certainly, yeah. So as we're explaining during the presentation that it is a versatile system and it's built off the Z-Link. So the gold lens actually just attaches to the Z-Link the same way that the weld visor attaches. So that way you've got that kind of the chassis, I guess, of the Z-Link, and then that gold visor is simply just attaching onto that, giving you that ability to be able to flip that up as well. Uh, and that visor obviously has that top flat on, giving that coverage uh, to the front portion of that Z-Link. So definitely very versatile there. Okay, so the next question here is, I currently have some RPB Z-Links for grinding. Can I use this kit? So the answer is yes. So as Edward said, I mean, if, if we take all these covers off here, we would have a, a standard Z-Link frame sitting here. Um, obviously the cape is attached. I'm not sure what, what, what product you have, whether it's a, a full length uh, Zytec cape or, or, or a, um, just a chin seal or a, sorry, a neck seal, but um, the cape that you have on your product currently will, will come off and then you can put this cape on. And then as Ed, Edward said earlier, you can either use the full kit and that's what we've done is to make it more, um, uh, more cost effective so the ongoing running cost of the product is, is more efficient is that you can buy these parts as a full kit or you can buy them separately so you could buy just the aluminum cape and just the gold lens or you could add this uh, main shield to reflect the, the front heat or you can buy the complete kit which obviously includes the the rear cape as well so answer is yes if you've got existing z-links you can use this system as well Interesting okay. question about whether or not we've got these in stock. That's a good question. Uh, it is a good question. Uh, it is a respirator and respirators are in high demand right now. But with RPB, uh, as with our entire range of respiratory protection equipment, we have them in stock and we can ship same day. So uh, if it's something that does interest you, uh, we're here to help uh, as far as inventory goes and getting products shipped quickly. Uh, next question here is how's your pricing compared to your competitors? So a good, good question. Um, the retail price on the complete kit. So as you're seeing it here with all the shrouds and the breathing tube cover and the PX5 PAPR, the map price. So the retail price on that is around about 2,100. I think it's $2,140 for the complete system. Uh, next question there um, pertaining to that as well is do you offer trials? So the answer is yes, we run a program called what we call buy to try. So, and how we do that is if you want to trial the product, you can purchase one and we offer you a guaranteed 30 day money back guarantee. So if you trial the product, it doesn't meet your expectations. Um, it's not what you thought it would be, or it just doesn't suit your environment or operator didn't like it, didn't fit them right, whatever it may be. We trust uh, that you wouldn't have any of that because they're just going to love it the minute they put it on. But if that was to happen, 
uh, you can return that and we will give you a full credit for that. I guess to just on that as well, reach out to your uh, distribution or uh, if you know your territory sales manager here at RPB uh, or anyone here at RPB, call our main line uh, and we can help you with that as well. So, so Edward, there's uh, two questions that have come in here. Um, I also have a PX4, PAPR, and considering going to the PX5, will I be able to integrate? And can you show the PX5 and the weld visor? And then there's a second question on that is I also have a PX4. So sure. Can the can the PX4 be used with this? So to answer that, uh, yes, it can. Uh, the PX4 can be used with the system, uh, as can the PX5. Uh, and in fact, in some of the video footage that we have, uh, on the uh, whole radiant heat system, it shows operators that are wearing both uh, the PX4 and the PX5. Uh, when it comes to the weld visor, so we already showed how this clips on and clips off. So that there can just get removed. And then I have a weld visor just here. So now that weld visor can simply just clip into place. So now if you are doing that uh, maintenance type work, you can uh, go ahead, do that welding, take that weld visor off and just use that gold plated lens. If you're getting into those high radiant heat environments, that is what makes this system versatile. And that way as well, you can just remove that weld visor and just get that grinding protection. So if you're maybe just doing inspections or walking around the facility and you don't need that high radiant heat environment protection, you can just walk around without that uh, weld visor on, still giving you full respiratory protection as well as that Z87 plus eye protection. So maximizing your safety there. So uh, next question is how many degrees could the Z-Link radiant heat and the PX5 handle? So that's a, a very, very good question. So in our instruction manual, Edward, I think is it, excuse me, is it, uh, does it say 3000 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit radiant heat? That is correct. So 3000 degrees radiant heat is what the material was rated for. Uh, so that is the temperature. And I think that's that's quite an extreme temperature, isn't it? Yeah, and we probably should clarify that, that, that radiant heat is obviously not direct heat. Um, you know, anything at 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, I think would probably incinerate. So that's radiant heat. Um, when they did the trials at one of the facilities, they actually took a Z-Link. That was very, very early on in the, in the product development before the aluminum cape or anything. They actually took a standard Z-Link just to see what the actual plastics and material would, would handle with without any covers or anything on it and they and they put it on a on a head form it was a special made head form to take that heat on a metal pole and that was kind of dangled in the furnace area and i think the temperature got up to around about 2100 degrees fahrenheit the helmet shell was fine there was a little bit of distortion on the actual visor but obviously now with that uh high heat the gold lens that's obviously reflecting that heat now so you're never actually going to get that direct heat Our next question is, is, is the breathing tube cover part of the reflective kit? And the answer is uh, yes. So when you buy the complete kit, so the full setup, like I said, you can buy it in parts if you wish, if you just want to use you know, just, the, just the reflective top, you can do that. But if you buy the full kit as it sits here, you get the breathing tube cover as part of that. Uh, another question here. Okay, so two questions um, asking the same thing is, uh, can I get this recording? Um, and the second one is, will a version of this video be available so it can be forwarded to our customers? So yes, we will have this recording available. Um, also those videos that you saw there, uh, we're gonna be turning that interview into a case study. So you'll actually see some actual footage of, of the products being used, which by the way, as, as everyone exits this webinar, we are gonna play a little bit of that footage. So um, you're welcome to leave as we finish, but there is actually gonna be some footage of the guys actually using the product in the, in the high heat environments. So 
those questions that you heard and question and answer session there, we will be putting that into a case study as well, which we'll have on our website, so you can forward that to your customers. Uh, next question here is, uh, do you have sales representation in Canada? And the answer is yes. Um, I'll have one of our team who actually handles the Canadian market uh, reach out to you and discuss that further with you. Ed, uh, one, other, one other question that, that's come in here, and I'm just going to rephrase it slightly because um, I know you spoke about this during the presentation, but and we've said it, but like, what if I wear out this part? here faster than 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 the back piece or, or the cape yeah so that's the whole idea of why we've made it uh in the three separate components so it makes it uh or it helps with reducing that cost of ownership so when a small part of the shroud wears out you don't have to replace the whole hood it has been separated into three components so if we did need to just replace that top cover you can simply come in here and unvelcro that from the uh, visor itself and that then just gets removed and replaced so it's now just replacing that one component of the whole cover uh, it, that's really i guess the biggest feedback we had about this is that also the cost of ownership part of it and the fact that it's not just one big hood that's covering it all up it has been properly set up into three main components, obviously, and the gold lens, as well as that breathing tube cover. But doing it that way is what helps reduce that cost of ownership. And that was actually one of the complaints we did get from the from the market during um, market research and development was you know, some of the hoods they were using, they weren't actually respirators, but they were just hoods. They were pulling over their cartridge mask. And you know, a lot of the times it was only the front of the hood that was getting beat up, it was getting the splash or the top of the hood, the rest of the hood was perfectly fine. And they felt it was it seemed a waste to be throwing a hood out just because one part was, you know, kind of burnt out and, and, um, you know, not safe to wear any longer. So that was the reason for doing it this way. And again, every application is going to be different. Some of them, you know, may wear at the same rate, but we see obviously the lenses, you're know, wearing a lot faster than the other parts, but then also this, this front, uh, shield here that it would just taken off being the main piece that's going to wear the fastest. Another question here is, is what if I have a need for supplied air? So very good question. So the system here is approved with powered air, so PX4 and PX5 and supplied air. So if you have a need for supplied air, you can use this product. Um, be a fantastic use of the C40, to be honest. So if you're up there on the on the pouring deck and you know, in very, very hot environments and you have access to proper breathing air, that would be a great solution for you. You're going to not only you know, get the reflective, um, get the protection from the reflection, reflective cape and the visor, but you're also going to actually have the air coming to you being cooled. Now, another point to that, because some people ask us this about the, um, you know, does the PAPR cool the air? And a PAPR is only taking the ambient air in the environment that you're in and blowing that into the respirator, obviously through a filter. But the fact that it's air flow and air movement, a lot of people comment that I, I feel a lot cooler. And at the foundry that we were in earlier in the week, they actually have a system where they're blowing air into the environment. So that air is going into the PAPR. So in essence, that's cooled air that the PAPR is sucking in and blowing into the into the respirator. So that is giving that cooling effect. I always use the analogy when people ask about a PAPR you know, and, and cooling is, it's like having a fan in a room. The fan is not cooling the air down, but that air movement give, gives you that cool effect. And that's exactly what a PAPR does when it's supplying that air into the respirator. It's a really good point too on the, the supplied air side of it. I think it's analyzing the environment that you're in. If you can be tethered back to an airline, you're going to get that ability to offer that climate control. Uh, whereas if you need that portability, you need to be able to move around more freely without being tethered back, that's when you need to consider that PAPR. Uh, but certainly can accommodate both ways. Another question here, if I'm in a heavy grinding application, do you make a clear lens attachment to save the primary clear lens? Um, 
which is a good question. Um, we don't offer the clear lens. This starts out as a clear lens. There's no reason why we couldn't. Uh, the only comment I would have to that is this lens, uh, just because of the size of it, it is an injection molded lens. So it's not a stamp lens. It's actually a molded lens because of the size of it. It's actually more expensive than the clear lens underneath. So probably the best that best use for heavy grinding is just to utilize this lens because it's, it's a less expensive part to replace on a frequent basis. And there's also peel off lenses that we can put onto that, uh, the main lens underneath here as well. So folks that are just using a Z-Link for grinding, which indeed there are a lot, that's one way to get around helping make that lens last longer is just those simple peel off lenses uh, to help with that, uh, just the abrasion from the, that grinding. Certainly been some good questions come in though. Yes. Kurt. Yeah, that's the, um, that's all of the questions that have come in so far. So if, if you do have any other questions, we, we would happily take them now. Um, trust we've covered off everything for you. As Edward said, we do have these in stock now. So they're in production um, right here. I'm not sure if you can hear the uh, forklift noise behind us, but our factory is just right behind this wall here. Uh, the product is in stock and we do have PAPRs in stock as well. So everything is ready to go. If you place an order uh, today, we're getting close to cutoff time now. It's at 2.48 here, but technically our cutoff time is three o'clock. So you've got 12 minutes if you want to get one in and have us ship it out to your same day. But we'll take any orders as soon as they come in. Oh, we do have another question here, Ed, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so the question is, is there a cover for the PAPR? So at this point, there isn't a cover for the PAPR. And with the feedback that we've gotten so far with the demo trials that have been out there, the PAPR is positioned behind the operator. So it's away from that reflective heat or radiant heat. Uh, so there's been no requirement for actually protecting that PAPR system. Uh, obviously, if that was something that needed to be addressed down the road, I'm sure that's something that we could always consider. Nothing's in, too impossible with us, is it? No, I think you heard that in the video that um, RPB listens. So um, we like to, and we, obviously we can't do everything. Um, and then during development, it's the best time obviously to make changes. When we have to make you know, any major changes to the product, we can't do that with obviously our, that getting a uh, recertification at NIOSH. So sometimes um, it might seem like we're not listening, but we will listen. It will just be when the product's going back in for another application. So we do try our best to listen to, to the market and we really appreciate the feedback we get from you. So any suggestions that you have for us, please reach out to us because you know that, that's what that's what makes our products great is, is your feedback and us kind of interpreting that into the world's best respirators. Another question here, does the weld attachment fit to the system as well? So answer is yes. Um, Edward just showed the weld visor going on, but you can just clip that gold visor off. Actually, it was very interesting while we're in the foundry and they, they, they have Z-Links and they have for some time now, not just for radiant heat, but for other areas of the foundry as well. Um, but one of the operators who was wearing a radiant heat system did have to do a repair, just like Phil said in his, in his uh, video. And he just clipped the weld visor on, went and did his repair and then clipped the visor back off again. So just making it very, very versatile and easy to use. Another question and come in here. So what other what other industries can this be be used in? Obviously, we've talked a lot about we've talked a lot about uh, foundries here, um, but it's any high heat environment. So you know, some of you maybe from different you know different environments have different uh, heat issues. So some of the environments that we've identified that will be very helpful for this is uh, steel mills, obviously foundries, as we said, uh, rubber facilities, uh, glass manufacturing. So basically anywhere where there's a furnace that's putting off a lot of heat, you've got a lot of radiant heat, this would be the perfect product for that. As Edward mentioned at the start, you know, Mars is on our next mission. We're not sure if we'll take the heat there, but maybe sure we could try. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's probably markets out there that we haven't even thought of yet. So if you're in a, a specialist industry and you know, you're wondering whether this is for you, please reach out to us and we'll definitely, um, definitely talk. We'll be more than happy to go through what your situation is and see if this is a suitable product for you. Another question here is, is the, is the gold lens 
scratch resistant? And it's a very good question. I had someone ask me this earlier in the week and I didn't know the answer. Um, so I went to our, our engineering team and got the confirmation that yes, the gold lens is uh, anti-scratch. So it has a hard coating on the actual lens on the outside and the inside of the lens. So it's providing protection obviously from the splatter, but then if the visor's up from anything that may be coming up in there when the actual gold visor's up. So yes, it does have uh, anti-scratch properties on the lens. That is on the gold-coated IR5 lens and the gold-coated, what we're calling clear lens. Both of them look gold, just one of them has that shading. We are going to be releasing just a standard IR5 lens as well. No, no coating, no gold coating. Now that one, just the way that they actually apply that IR5 coating, it doesn't have anti-scratch on that. It, it can't be applied to the IR5, um, but we will be releasing that. That will be used in markets such as um, metallization and things like that when there's obviously a very, very bright light. You're not trying to protect from radiant heat. You're just trying to protect from a bright flash. Not as bright as like a weld. You need a higher shade than that. And this will just be a shade five. Also, if anyone is wanting additional information about the Z-Link Radiant Heat System, we offer virtual training sessions so where you can jump on uh, with ourselves. We can step through the product, uh, maybe in a little bit more detail, uh, and we'd be really happy to do that. So again, reach out to us uh, so that we can help you understand the product more and we can learn more about your needs to get you into better respiratory protection equipment. Well, it's, it's actually the best, isn't it? The world's best, yeah. It is. And it also protects you for life's best moments. That it does. And as you would have seen there, um, we, we couldn't help but ask that question to, to, to fill there because that is why we do what we do um, here at RPB. You know, we live and breathe. We walk and talk protecting you for life's best moments. So that, that means a lot to us to, to have people who are using our products be able to get home safely every night um, as you heard, both of those gentlemen refer to their children, you know, whether it's your children or your, or your pets or your, just your wife, or maybe it's your, uh, your model car, whatever it is that's the most important to you, for you to get home safely each night to that is what drives us. It's what drives our de development. So we are very passionate about protecting you for life's best moments. Well, Edward, I think that's all the questions that have come in. Again, we'll stay on here for another few minutes if anyone has any further questions. Other than that, that wraps us up today. So again, thank you very much for joining. We appreciate your time. Please reach out to us if you think this is beneficial for you and we look forward to working with you. Thank you and have a great afternoon.